Y'all see why I don't like black people? <laughs> but as the audience, you are allowed to not like that. What's up with y'all? What's up with y'all? Welcome back to Moxie Approved. David Lucas. Um, I'm out here in Asia, so I know I'm kind of late on this video, but there's no way I can let a moment like this pass. Um, there's a video that came out about David Lucas, comedian. Did you call me man? I still can't see this black ass nigga. Huh? Yeah, you is, nigga. Your ass look like you look. You look like big boy after that surgery. Huh? Mama D look like a lizard with that hair. This nigga saying nothing with your Tyler Perry face ass, nigga. Come on, nigga. You want to talk all that shit? Bring your ass up here. Let us. Let us see some of that that terrible out. Man, just bring your ass on stage, nigga. Stop yelling from the. I actually know David Lucas. Uh, I still consider him a friend. I haven't talked to him in years. I ended up moving. So he's pretty much went viral over the last few days over this George Floyd joke. Come on, your tab ain't number $16, nigga. I'll take care of <laughs> That nigga, drank, he back there drinking Coors Light, nigga. <laughs> so you can't bring black people nowhere, nigga. This is this why I tell racist jokes so niggas don't come. <laughs> Man, come on, stay here, nigga. Like, ain't no room. Y'all see why I don't like black people? <laughs> How much is it gonna take you to come on say? I buy your whole table around a round of Hennessy shots. I know that's what y'all drink. <laughs> nigga try to ruin the whole show, man. All these fucking good ass white people at my show. <laughs> and you wanted to show them the reason George Floyd got his neck nailed on. <laughs> Don't ooh at that joke. <laughs> it's just a joke, man. I would have never kneeled on George Floyd's neck. I would have shot that nigga. That was <laughs> way too long. <laughs> oh my God. I, just, I think I just canceled the rest of my black fans. <laughs> you know, look. <laughs> I've been to Minnesota and I went in the gas station. And I asked them niggas to let me see that fake 20. I know my YouTube sub base, so some of y'all ain't gonna like what I'm about to say, but I have to keep it true to myself and who I am and what I represent. Um, was it a great joke? No. But one thing, a lot of y'all found out about me um, talking about political topics and stuff like that, but I've always said at the end of the day, I'm a stand-up comedian, all right? My page, my podcast, you, 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 whatever you want to call it, that's where it's my personal thoughts. But I'm a stand-up comedian. And it would never be right for another stand-up comedian to say that another comedian um, should not be able to tell certain kind of jokes. I was going to say, I would be a bitch-ass comic to, to speak against somebody being able to express themselves on stage in such a way. I just put up a dope ass Paul Mooney video. What's one of the things he said in the video? He said, for freedom of speech, y'all need to fight for me, for, for me to be able to say what I wanna say. You can do racial jokes as long as they're funny. And that goes both ways, folks. Buy a t-shirt on the way out too. I got a Make America Roast Again shirt in the style of Trump. Paul Mooney, which y'all know, is like my favorite comedic writer, one of my favorite stand-up comics all, all, uh, all time. You can't be like, he, he's able to tell those jokes, but other people can't tell the jokes on the other side or jokes that are against what you may call, uh, that's anti-black. One thing that he was surprised at is he wanted to know where those people found out about him. How did y'all find me to come here? Okay, she said she knew it. Okay, I like it when you know it. Baby, how did you find me, sweetheart? I got to wait till you, huh? Only fair. Only fair. This nigga still got jokes from the back. <laughs> um, I know David Lucas blew up from Tony Hinchcliffe and the Joe Rogan, that whole side. That's how they are. How good is David Lucas, though? 
a comedy. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's, 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 one of my he's one of the best guys ever at roasting, like back and <clears throat> forth, like with Tony Hinchcliffe. Dude, he they, lit they Tony up last night in the grand room. <laughs> those are kind of jokes. You, look, I did maybe one show with those people and that was it, right? If you don't tell those kind of jokes, they're not going to fuck with you, period. That's just how it is. That's where he comes from. I don't know the people that went to see his show. I don't know what they were expecting. That's the kind of jokes he tell. Now, he also comes from, which I also do at times too, I judge roast battles. He comes from roast battles. And I'm gonna tell y'all like this, roast battles is the last moniker of freedom of speech in America, hands down. I like judging roast battles and I like participating in roast battles. I can say what I want about a transgender. I can say what I want about a person that is gay. I can say what I want about somebody that is white. And yes, you can say what you want about somebody that is black. That's what David Lucas came from. He came from that background. Now, I'm going to also add this. I'm a comedian. I can't speak against people, nor do I want to speak against people telling those kind of jokes. So guess what? I can't tell the kind of jokes that I tell because I'm on the opposite end of that. I go in on certain folks. I can't tell the kind of jokes that I tell if people aren't allowed to tell those kind of jokes. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that I don't like, which I can't blame on David Lucas. I don't like the game. You know what they say, don't hate the player, hate the game. I can't stand the game, right? Let him do a joke like that about the Holocaust. You'll never see him again. You'll never see, not at, not at the level that he at, you'll never see him again, right? Same thing with the kind of jokes that I tell. I have a slow grind. I had to go to YouTube to get some of my shit popping because you tell any, uh, a lot of anti-white jokes, whether they're funny or not, a lot of clubs ain't gonna book you unless you make your own name. They all about that dollar, right? They all about that dollar. So that part, I can't blame on David Lucas. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure he's sleeping well at night. He said he booked for the rest of the year. I Look, I've been out of the country for a year. I did not know David Lucas blew up like that. I mean, damn. You know, and I, I never hate on nobody. You know, um, I supported him way before anybody knew of the guy. Like I said, I put him in a short film of mine. All right, you offended too, baby, with the braids? Right, you offended too? God damn, man, fuck. Y'all good? Or y'all about to... Oh, I'm... <laughs> Who else from over there? You too, bro? God damn, bro. Oh, but you fuck with me a little bit, right? Uh, see, that is, yeah. Damn, one more guy. Damn, man. That nigga don't even want to go, but his ride leaving. He don't even want to go. He like, man, I don't like George Floyd either, man. That nigga. Comedy, thank you, baby. Y'all have a good night. You, you fuck with me? There we go. Oh, they roll with him. They... L.A., also where David Lucas came from, I left L.A. and went to New York. One of the reasons I left L.A. and went to New York is because that's how you blow up in L.A. There's people in L.A. right now at open mics, blacks, that that's all their jokes are. They all anti-black. You want me to be real with you? That's how Gerard Carmichael blew up. Well, some other stuff with him, too. But that ain't none of my business. I'm not here to talk about that. But one of the things he did to get his name known in L.A. is he wrote very clever jokes that were anti-black and people took notice. That's how it is in Los Angeles. All right. I left because I couldn't take it. You want to know how bad it was for me when I was in a belly room and stuff like that. And they would have these roast jokes and uh, shows like that that would be very anti-black or whatever. The whole audience would look at me and see the, the comics and the audience will look at me. I know when people see me, they see me as a representation of black people. It is what it is. I go through more racism than the average black because I'm unapologetically black. On a job, the white they want to send some type of example, I'm, they're going to use me because I'm unapologetically black. This is what my hair is about. Everything about me is, is pro-black. White people get offended by my hair, right? So uh, that leads to me saying that um, one thing that comedians tend to do, which even I had to do sometimes, do I have jokes about black people? Yes, I do. Are they at that level? No. I can't tell a joke like that. I, I mean, my black fans, I got to hear that might leave. Oh, good shit, man. I got, I got. 
Cause nigga, I was just warming up with that George Floyd shit. <laughs> you ready to go? All right, baby. Okay. I can tell you voted for Biden. All right, get out of here, baby. Come on, come on, don't make it a big deal. Come on, baby. You already bought that VIP ticket, bitch. I got that $42. For me, it would look dumb as fuck. Because people will be like, man, you talk about your own folks. Which they doing to him also. Well, it would be like that times 10 if I went up there and told a joke like that. I don't even have it in me to tell jokes like that. But I do have some jokes where I, where I poke a little bit at our community. Uh, Richard Pryor was very good at that. Um, Patrice O'Neill was very good at that. And what it is, is this is how you do it. You tell a joke um, that I guess you could say is anti-black. Then after that, you go in on the white people. I didn't see his whole entire set that night. Maybe that's what he did. Um, but that is a tactic that, that you use. You, you, you know, I, my set, I talk about everybody. I got a couple jokes where I'm criticizing the black community. Then, I, then a lot of people will say, I'm too hard on the white community. Some people will say, oh, I don't like those transgender jokes you got, right? So that's just the way it is. But all in all, um, I actually know David Lucas. I know him off the stage. He's not a house Negro to me, all right? I'm not mad at y'all. As a comedian, I cannot speak against someone being able to say what they want to say on stage. But as the audience, you are allowed to not like that and to not go to his show. And I'm pretty sure he don't want people at his show that don't like his form of comedy. Who would want that? I'm trying to figure out how they found me and got offended. I got, I got so much offensive shit. That's when you get people walking out and people heckling you and all that. Who would want that? Nobody wants that. So you, as the audience, have the right to not support and not go to his shows. But I'm going to tell y'all something. Once again, this is just how the game is. As this video went viral and blacks is like, oh, we don't want to support him and stuff like that. You want to know what white people are going to do? They're going to put all their support behind him, right? Let white people find out as a whole the black community don't deal with David Lucas anymore. People will send him money and not even go to his show. That's how they are. You know, Kyle Rittenhouse and stuff like that. I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. <laughs> I like Kyle Rittenhouse too. Okay, he'll get up out of there, nigga. That's the way they are. So I'm pretty sure, you know, he said he, I didn't even know this dude blew up like this. Congratulations, dogs. I'm not no hater. Uh, he said, I'm booked for the rest of the year. <laughs> he might, he probably going to become a millionaire from white people from this. All right. His shows is going to sell out. Even if it's all white people, his shows going to sell out. But I want to add that I personally know him from what I knew. Maybe he changed from when the last time I see him. I ain't, I ain't probably seen him probably about four years. I moved to New York City. Um, New York City is a little bit more well-rounded. But one thing I will say, um, knowing David Lucas, he didn't come off as a coon to me off stage. Maybe he playing the game, that's just all on him. I'll never tell no jokes like that because I ain't got it in me. But I'll never hate on anybody else telling those kind of jokes. And uh, you let me know how you feel in the comments section. I know some of y'all ain't going to like what I have to say, but it's just the truth. You know, um, you have comics out there like me, that's the opposite of that. Okay? Um, but that's a way of blowing up in Hollywood is to tell those kind of jokes. All right? I didn't see his whole set. Maybe he did a set where he was talking about white people too. In the 11 minute video I saw on World Star, he was roasting people. He wasn't really going in on white people like that. But just for me to summarize it, as a comedian, I will never speak against people saying whatever jokes they want to say on stage because I want to say what I feel like saying on stage. But as an audience, you are allowed to not like that and to not go to his shows. And that's just what it is. But you let me know how y'all feel in the comment section. And if you haven't yet, hit that like button and apply pressure to that subscribe button. Apply pressure to that subscribe button. I ain't got the water with me. I'm at the beach. Water's over there. <laughs> i see y'all next time.